Now, it's an issue that inevitably rears its head every January. The change the debate, change the date debate. We've grown accustomed to this issue hitting saturation point in the media during the first month of the year. But this year, Launceston City Council has jumped the gun, dragging the issue into the national consciousness when it voted to shift citizenship ceremonies from January 26 to January 25 to be more inclusive of Indigenous Australians. Now, the council was forced into an embarrassing backdown when the Morrison government moved to make it compulsory for all but the smallest councils to hold a citizenship ceremony on Australia Day. Now, if councils don't toe the line, the federal government says it can intervene and revoke their right to hold any future ceremonies at all. Sounds fair enough to me. But this week, the Canberra bubble has been obsessed with the opinion of one law expert who's warned this bid to strip councils of the right to hold citizenship ceremonies could be unconstitutional. Now, my point here is this. This whole Australia Day debate, it's a waste of time. A loud, PC-posturing sideshow to the real legitimate issues at hand. It's tokenism. It's gesturing. It's virtue signalling on steroids. And it does a whole lot of nothing to help our disadvantaged Indigenous communities. Those who fuel it along are a distraction, diverting attention from where it needs to go. As Scott Morrison has said, it's indulgent, self-loathing. And just imagine what might happen if the elite political class gave half the airtime to fixing Indigenous suicide rates as they did the change the date debate. Change the date. Don't change the date. Whatever. But how about prioritising what matters most here? One person who shares this opinion is Jacinta Price. She joins us live now from Alice Springs. Jacinta, thank you for joining uh, Kenny on Sunday tonight. Really appreciate your time. Um, what are your thoughts on this particular debate? And I know that uh, you yourself get around to a lot of Indigenous communities. You see a lot of the suffering. You see a lot of the drama. You see a lot of the challenges, which I just referred to. And yet here we have a certain class of people, in particular local councillors, who want to stymie the debate and uh, around actually addressing these issues and want to talk about changing the date of Australia Day. Where do you sit on this? Well, I, I'm, I'm sick to death of this um, particular debate and I see it as a form of laziness. Uh, these are individuals who would um, use symbolism to act and behave and, and uh, make themselves look as though they're doing something when they're, in fact, doing nothing whatsoever to change circumstances for Indigenous people uh, anywhere in the country, uh, let alone within their own communities. Um, being a councillor myself, you know what you've got to what you've got to focus on is your core business, which is rates, roads, and rubbish. And uh, this debate is is dividing a nation, and it's 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 just ridiculous. And for what for what end? For what is it going? It's only going to appease those who continue to make demands on the rest of Australia to change. Uh, in, in claiming that it's going to heal uh, who they are as individuals. But we all know that healing and empowerment comes from within, not this expectation that everybody else around us needs to change in order for them to feel better about how, who they are. Jacinda, you make a very, very good point right at the outset. Uh, when I first started as a cadet reporter, I used to cover local government and it was all about roads, rates and rubbish. And now they want to poke their bib into these sort of social reform type issues. And we see it in Byron Bay, we see it in Launceston, we see it at Sydney City Council. They need to stick to their knitting. Instead, they're poking their bib into these particular areas. And, uh, you know, it, it beggars belief. What do you think the Commonwealth needs to do, Jacinta, to ensure that these guys stick to their knitting. Is it time that we actually stripped a council uh, and said, OK, you must stick to J January 26 and make an example of them? 
Quite possibly. I, I think, you know, enough of the threats, it's probably time to, to take action. If people want to act in a divisive way uh, and, and not, you know, consistently with the rest of Australia, just so they can make themselves appear to be virtuous, well, then perhaps it is time they experience the consequences of their particular actions. Uh, you know, it's it's... What's really frustrating is the fact that if people, if councillors and councils actually want to do something for Indigenous people, well, why don't they actually find out what their needs, what their communities' needs are? The Indigenous people within their communities find out what their needs are, what sort of practical steps can be taken to address their needs so that they're providing actual outcomes for those individuals in their communities instead of uh, continuing to attempt to virtue signal and not achieve anything whatsoever. Jacinda, it's interesting you get around to a lot of these communities. It's interesting that neither the Darwin or Alice Springs councils ever have this debate. It's always these woke councils, as I said, around Byron Bay, where, you know, the, uh, the child, the child immunisation rates are uh, among the worst in the world, worse than the Congo. I mean, not only do they put their kids at risk, but they're trying to change uh, the national debate around, uh, around our history. Why is it that the elders uh, in your communities and the councillors in your communities say, no, nah, we're not going to go there? Look, people, people have got bigger issues. They've got bigger fish to fry. They're, you know, we're faced with, uh, you know, uh, children who are suffering, if, if anything. If, if these councils want to uh, virtue signal or if they want to lobby government, perhaps they should be uh, lobbying their state and territory governments uh, to uphold the rights of children uh, Indigenous children and ensure that they are actually being uh, looked after and not heading down the road to incarceration. These are the sorts of issues that Aboriginal people are concerned with. The fact that uh, their children aren't, you know, there's many children who are being neglected, uh, which is leading them to incarceration. As we always hear, we have the highest levels of incarceration in this country, uh, and that is largely due to the family violence epidemic. Why don't these councils get on board and campaign to end family violence? I mean, these are the real issues that are going on. And when they push for these particular issues, what they're doing is they're supporting uh, the elites who who want to focus on these issues and not the real issues because they haven't been able to solve those particular issues. They want to focus on these side issues instead and make demands. And there's a level of cultural bullying that goes on as well. I mean, I've experienced it from individuals on my speaking tour. And there are many Aboriginal people who don't want to speak out against the status quo for fear of threats toward them, you know, the sorts of threats that I've received, they're fearful of receiving themselves. So there's, there is a bigger picture here, but no one's prepared to really look at it. Jacinda, you mentioned your speaking to her and you mentioned the fact that you yourself have copped some bullying and I admire you tremendously for the way in which you've handled yourself over the years when you've been subjected to this incredibly aggressive uh, tone and behaviour and I've seen some of the uh, stuff that you've been subjected to on Twitter. It's just extraordinary. How do you cope with that both from within your own Indigenous community and of course woke whites? Well, look, I know there's a hell of a lot of Indigenous people out there who support me, who quietly support me because they themselves don't don't want to be shot down. Uh, they reach out to me regularly. Uh, aside from that, there are a number of many, many non-Indigenous Australians who support me. But I speak up because there are those who don't have the opportunity to speak. There are those who are real victims who are often silenced and there is a level of bullying that goes on within communities. And I just won't allow these bullies to bully me. I will continue to do what I have to do because there are those that really rely on me to do that. Jacinda, you mentioned the bullies. Now, what happened with your speaking tour and the ABC? Uh, what did they get up to to try and make your life difficult? Well, they basically, uh, they, they preferred to uh, listen to interview the bullies uh, and those who attempted to deplatform me without actually coming to me and uh, giving me a right of reply or even, or even um, reporting on what it was they heard 
uh, within my speaking tour. I had a journalist attend my speaking tour, and at no point did she ever even, um, you know, give the give her listeners any idea of what it was that I was talking about, which is really shameful because a lot of what I spoke about was dealing with um, speaking about a lot of those who have been victims within my own family and telling their stories as well of, of those who have been murdered, uh, have, have suffered, at the, you know, um, family and domestic violence, uh, who've lost their lives to alcohol. They're the sorts of things that I was talking about, very real issues. And so it's very disappointing that this particular ABC journalist chose not to um, provide that or challenge those who were bullying me.